All right, well, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you happen to be in the world uh, currently joining us. Uh, this is uh, Adding Style with CSS Jumpstart. Uh, I am uh, Christopher Harrison, and uh, I'm uh, joined today by uh, Helen Zhang. Uh, Helen, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself. Yeah, sure. Um, much like Christopher, I work at Microsoft, and I am a startup developer evangelist working out of San Francisco. So I. So I work with uh, top tier startups out of the Bay Area to basically help them onboard onto Azure, um, help them develop great apps for our platforms, and I also, you know, just generally spread the word of Bispark, telling startups about how they can get access to software and services from Microsoft. And in my spare time, um, I'm a volunteer CS teacher, and I guess both in work and in life, I'm a really huge JavaScript junkie. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> well, welcome, welcome. Um, and uh, as for me, I am uh, Christopher Harrison. I'm a, a longtime MCT, spent about uh, 15 years as a Microsoft Certified Trainer. Um, and uh, recently, about uh, six months ago, actually, uh, Microsoft said, hey, you want to come work for us? And I said, eh, sure, why not? And so uh, I packed up the family, uh, moved up here. I actually got started with uh, technology back when my father uh, brought home a uh, VIC-20, graduated on a Commodore 64, best OS ever. Um, and uh, basically, I've just uh, kind of turned that into a career. Um, I'm a content developer focused mostly on uh, Office 365 and uh, web development. And then uh, outside the office, uh, you can find me uh, out running somewhere, spending time with my wife or uh, four-legged child. In the meantime, uh, let's go ahead and uh, talk about what we're going to talk about. Uh, so we've got uh, six modules today. Uh, and uh, module one is sort of the ubiquitous getting started with CSS, where we want to talk about what CSS is, the basics of how to apply it, how to bring in external style sheets, and so forth. And then that will lead us very naturally into module two, where we're going to take a look at how to identify uh, individual elements or individual uh, blocks of of, uh, of elements. Page three is going to be, or uh, page three, module three even, is going to be page layouts. Um, and uh, that's where we're going to talk about really just how to lay out your pages, how to put uh, different things into different spots, how to handle positioning, and how to handle uh, the, uh, the boxes as they work inside of uh, CSS. Module four is going to be uh, media queries and focusing in on how to automatically resize things uh, or make things show, make things hide based on the size of the uh, based on the size of the display. Make sure that uh, you know when you're going in and designing everything that it will actually work on a uh, mobile phone, uh, for example. Uh, module five is going to be transitions, transformations, which is going to be a lot of really cool things that you can do with CSS, not JavaScript, as far as making things kind of um, highlight or move things around and so forth. And then finally, we'll close it all off taking a look at CSS preprocessors because one of the things that uh, you're going to notice is that CSS can sometimes be a little bit verbose. Is that a, a good way to put it? Uh, yeah, verbose, and I would also say <laughs> finicky, for sure. Finicky, finicky. <laughs> I, I, I like that word finicky. Um, and so the preprocessors are there to, to try and, uh, and help you out there. Cool. Now, uh, now that we've talked a little bit about us and a little bit about what we're going to talk about, let's talk a little bit about you and kind of um, what the expectations are. So we sort of expect that you've done some level of HTML. Uh, we're not going to teach HTML today. Um, and we also expect that you've probably done maybe a little bit of CSS, that maybe you um, kind of opened up Bootstrap and went, oh, what in the world is this? Um, and are trying to figure all of that out. Or maybe you're, you're supporting a site and you're just trying to kind of navigate the land. So maybe you played around a little bit with CSS, but we're not setting a very high level on CSS knowledge, that this really is going to be um, an introduction to CSS. And also along those lines, it's definitely worth mentioning, we're not going to cover every last CSS 
property. We would be here all of today and tomorrow and the day after that and the day after that and probably the day after that trying to cover all of the individual properties. So we're not going to do that. So we really are focused in on some of the bigger properties and really a lot of how CSS is going to uh, is going to function because that's the stuff that uh, that you really need to kind of learn. The individual properties, that's a lot of key value pairs that you can go look up later on. So that's really going to be our, uh, our focus. If you are looking to dig a little bit deeper or to try and find uh, a little bit of prerequisites, I would recommend the HTML5 CSS Fundamentals uh, MVA that uh, Bob Tabor did. And then there's also a Microsoft course 20480, which is programming in HTML5 with uh, JavaScript and CSS uh, that, uh, that you can check out. Uh, beyond that, uh, since you guys have uh, joined today, you're a part of a 2.5 million user community, uh, which is pretty cool on uh, Microsoft Virtual Academy. Uh, it's a great place to go in, find all sorts of uh, great training. Uh, you can uh, earn your 50 points for uh, watching this. You'll notice the uh, their outro code and then um, uh, the uh, little URL that you can go to to uh, punch all of that in. Fantastic. So. What do you say we uh, actually get started? Yeah. All right. Cool. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, at CSS. There's the camera that I want. Let's take a look at uh, at CSS, and now he takes it away and uh, talk about exactly what CSS is uh, is all about here. Uh, so we're going to start off with kind of what CSS, why you want to use CSS, um, what uh, what's important about it. And then we'll roll on into uh, element selection. We'll actually spend a lot of time uh, today, both in this module and in the next module, talking about how to identify uh, individual elements, how to identify types of elements, how to identify elements based on their state, where they happen to be, and so forth. So that way I can say, hey, this is how I want you to display. This is where I want you to display. Maybe I don't want you to display. Things like that. So we'll go in and take a look at, uh, at all of that. We'll take a look at the different ways that we can actually apply CSS to a page, and that will actually lead us perfectly into CSS inheritance. Now, chances are you've checked out another MVA, and one of the things that you've probably picked up about MVA in general is that MVAs do tend to be demo heavy. Today's not going to be an exception to that. We are going to have an awful lot of demos because you're a developer, right? Yes. And I'm a developer, and you're all developers. And one of the big things about being developers, we need to see it. Yeah. You know, you need to actually see how it works. So there is going to be a lot of demos. The one little catch that we're going to have a bit this morning is there's a little bit of groundwork that we need to lay out first before we can get to a demo. So if you're sitting there and you're watching and you're going, hey, can, can we see a demo? Trust me. There's going to be plenty of demos. We'll get there. It's just going to take a couple of minutes to kind of roll through a little bit of background stuff first. So cool. Well, let's get in and take a look then at what CSS is all about. So CSS, of course, stands for cascading style sheets. All right. Well, the cascading part we'll talk about in a few minutes. Let's focus in on the style sheet part for right now. The style sheet part is this is a language that we can use now to lay out whatever it is that we might want. And of course, the most natural coupling is with HTML. Now, you might be wondering, all right, well, wait a minute, Christopher. I could actually fire up HTML, and, and I could actually just say something like this, that maybe, uh, do, 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 do. actually, apparently, I'm going to do it this way, because I don't have Zoom started yet, but that's OK. So maybe I could go in, and I could say bold, and I could say hello, like that, and I could close off my bold tag like that. Well, that's style, right? Yeah, I mean, it'll make the hello bold. It'll make the hello bold, but is that a really good way to do things? Uh, not if you want to, for instance, repeat this or you know, apply to a couple of different elements. Absolutely. Or if you want to change it, even. Yeah, that's exactly it. Because what we've now said is that hello has to be bold. That's it. And, and so the first big problem is, what happens if you want to change that? Or what happens if you want to be able to change that based on the device? So maybe I want that to be bold on a, a mobile phone, but I don't want that to be bold on a desktop. Or maybe I don't want that to be bold when it's printed out. Well, I've said, this is going to be bold. That's it, period. End of discussion. There's nothing else that that's going to be but bold. 
The other big problem that I have is, have I told you anything else about this little hello? Do you know anything else about that hello? Nothing. Nothing. You know that it's going to be bold, and that's it. Yeah. Is that a title? Is that a greeting? Is that a header for an article? Yeah, I kind of think it's important, but even that, I mean, I'm not sure. Exactly. And that's the problem. So you don't know if it's, if it's important or not. I don't know if it's important or not. The browser isn't going to know if it's important. A screen reader isn't going to know it's important. And a search engine isn't going to know it's important. That obviously a lot of time is spent on SEO search engine optimization. And SEO is extremely important. And one of the things that I always try to highlight is if you're doing good things, that's going to naturally start to move your page up. You know, a lot of people spend time focused in on performance, and, and performance is important. But really, if you write good code first, you're going to find more often than not that the good code is the best performant code. So if you just focus in on, hey, how can we make this code work really, really uh, well, read really well, that's, generally speaking, automatically going to be the fastest way to write it. Same exact thing when you're talking about search engine optimization, is that if you design your page as well, they're typically going to be optimized in search engines. Why? Because the search engine is going to understand what that page is about. So if I can tell a search engine, hey, that's a header, it now has more information that it can operate on, and it has a better understanding of where to put that page in regards to or in relation to other pages for particular queries. So not only do we want to focus in on this is how we want to display it, but we also want to focus in on exactly what that information is. And that's where that separation of concern comes into play. So rather than just simply saying, hey, we want this to be bold, let's let HTML put together the structure of the document. So let's let HTML tell us this is what the head is. This is what the article is. This is what the section is. This is where our navigation is. Let HTML do things like that. And then let's let something else handle the logic. That's, of course, going to be JavaScript. And let's let something else handle the formatting and display. And that's where CSS is going to come into play. That nice, clean separation of concern. So rather than going in and having a bold here, maybe we go in and we use a header tag. Or maybe we go in and we do um, an H1 tag. And I understand that H1, of course, is going to give you formatting. But H1 is still going to be understood as that's a header. And we can, of course, take that with style and adjust that. Yeah. So yeah, so focus our HTML on describing our data. Focus our CSS then on how we want to display that data. And that's why CSS is important. All right, now let's talk a little bit about the basics. Now, the nice part about CSS in general is it is a relatively easy language to understand, I would say. Um, that you're going to notice that it's really broken down into two basic sections. That we've got selectors, and then we're going to have the key value pairs. So our selectors are basically, what do we want to apply this to? And so this could be an individual element. This could be groups of elements. This could be elements uh, of a particular type. This could be elements in different locations. But it's, what do we want to apply this to? Then it's going to be, what property do we want to set and to what value do we want to set it to? So now that we've figured out, oh, OK, this is what we want to focus our attention on. This is what we want to manipulate. The next question then becomes, well, what do we want to Excuse me, what do we want to manipulate on that? Exactly how do we want to make that look? Do we want to move it somewhere else? Do we want to make it bold? Do we want to change the color? Things like that. So that's the basics of our CSS syntax. And the thing that you're going to notice is that this syntax is going to be true pretty much universally. So regardless of where it is that you happen to be applying this CSS, so if you put it into a section on a page, which we're going to take a look at, if you put it into an external file, it's still always going to be the exact same. The only place where you're not going to have a selector, which we'll see in a, in a couple of minutes, is if we, on an element, happen to say style equals. So we're not going to have a selector there, because it's going to be on that particular element. Instead, what we're going to do is we're just going to take our property value pairs and put those into there. 
Okay, so now let's talk about finding those elements. Now, I mentioned earlier that we're going to spend a lot of time on element selection. We've got an entire module coming up on element selection. For right now, we're just going to take a look at the basics. And those three basics are finding all items of a particular type, of a class, we'll have to talk about what a class is, and then finally, based on an ID. But let's start off by talking about an element. So an element, sort of as you might guess, is going to apply to the element. And so all we have to do inside of our CSS is simply say whatever the name of that element happens to be. And one very cool thing that you can do in the syntax, and I don't have it on the slide, is you can also actually list multiple elements with commas. So I could say, well, if I want that to apply to all H1 and all H2 tags, then I can just simply H1, comma, H2, comma, H3, and whatever else it is that, uh, that you might want. So all of our H2 elements in this case would then have three different properties set on them. So our font family, our font weight, and our color. Now, I mentioned earlier, we're not going to go through every single property. Because not only would that take forever, I think that would be a little bit boring. Yeah, I think a lot of these are <laughs> self-explanatory just from looking at it. Yeah, they, generally speaking, they are self-explanatory. Now, you know, one of the things, though, and, and I find this sometimes with like font weight and then font decoration, is it's not always as clear as you might hope. Yeah. This is where the IntelliSense in Visual Studio really shined. Yeah. That the IntelliSense for CSS is spectacular. So that way, if you're not sure of what you're looking for, just start typing a few characters. Chances are, just like Helen said, because a lot of them are self-explanatory, explanatory, you'll find the one that you're looking for. So just type a few characters and then go, oh, okay, that's the one that I want, and then let the IntelliSense sort of guide you from there. Exactly. I think the one that is confusing, though, is color. Um, color is one of the ones that we have here for the H2 element. Mm -hmm. And color, you might think color should just apply to whatever the element is, you know, if it's a if it's like a, a box, that, that would apply to the box, but it, I mean, it usually just applies to text. Exactly, yep. And that's, that's the one that I think gets a lot of people <laughs> in the beginning. Yeah, yeah, so it, it, you would think it might be font dash color. Yeah, exactly, but it's color. If you, if you put the, the color thing, uh, um, the color property on body, it'll just apply to all the text in the body. Right. It won't make the, it, you know, change the background color, for instance. Exactly, but there is a background color property. Exactly. Which, yeah. Uh, we'll get to. Yep, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, I also want to highlight real quickly here um, on this and kind of use this as, as a little side teaching is you'll notice that we've got font family. And one of the cool things that you can do with CSS, and this is a little bit advanced and so we're not going to uh, dig too far into it, is you can actually push down um, your own fonts. So if you have a true type font and you want to push that down, you actually have, have that ability. Um, so fonts are obviously a very big thing. The, there are a couple little catches about trying to push down your own fonts and, and things like that. So whenever you are going to be choosing a font, you want to give the browser the ability to fall back to something else. So if it doesn't have a particular font that you might want, give it something that it can fall back to. And that's exactly what font family is going to do here. Is that with font family, what I'm going to do is specify, OK, well, we want to use Verdana. If you don't have Verdana, then let's fall back to some other sans serif font, which is, is basically going to be just like that. So it's not going to have, um, uh, so for example, if I had an L. So that would be a serif, so it's got my little feet. Um, sans serif is just going to have the little L. Yeah. Sort of the simplest way, I think, to describe it. Yeah, I think serif fonts you can associate with like newspapers or basically print things. And there then sans serif is, you know, what you normally see sans serif fonts online. They're a bit easier to read on exactly. the screens. Yeah, yeah, they're a little bit easier digital wise. Yep. Okay. So, element, that's going to apply to every single H2. Now, when it comes to like an H2 tag, that's probably just fine. You know, because you're probably going to be using those for headers, and you probably want all of your headers to look the same. So H2, just globally say, yes, we want that to, to work for everything. That's going to be perfect. But how about a div tag? D do you think that you're going to globally be wanting to set things for all div tags or all span tags everywhere? Yeah, it's a bit too general, yeah, exactly. right? Because you're going to use those everywhere on your page. Exactly. So 
we want to be able to, rather than just simply saying I want all div tags to look a particular way, we want to be able to identify particular types of div tags because it's going to be based on how we're currently using them. So we might be setting up a navigation section with a div tag. So I might say div, but I want this for my navigation. Or we might be setting up a sidebar and I'm going to be using a div tag for, for that. So we want to be able to identify different types of div tag. And that's where class comes into play. That a class is going to give us the ability to identify elements of a particular type. And the way that we're going to identify that type is by adding on a class. So there's going to be two moving parts here. The first moving part is going to be inside of CSS. Now you're going to notice here on the syntax that our syntax is slightly different from what we had before. That previously we just simply said name of the tag. Now what you're going to notice is I've got a little dot there. And my dot indicates that this is going to be a class. So that needs to be inside the CSS. By the way, you are going to notice that a lot of the demos uh, are going to just simply use color, um, especially early on, just because it's such an easy way to identify when you're trying to do element selectors that, hey, look, this applied, or in the case of inheritance, that this is the one that actually won out. So we'll do a lot with, uh, with color with uh, uh, some of the early demos. But in any event, so we'll make that red. So that's the first part inside of CSS. The second part is going to be inside of the HTML. And you'll notice right there that we've got class equals title. Now the great advantage to a class here is that classes are reusable. So it's possible that maybe this title is going to be for different sidebars. So I've got a sidebar here. I've got a sidebar over here. I want a title up top. I want a title up top. So I can go in and reuse that in multiple places. And I can flag, hey, this is going to be a title. Let me go erase all of my ink. There we go. Perfect. So we've got our CSS. We've got our HTML. And thus the result is going to be hello CSS. Now, the problem with doing something like this is that that might be even still a little bit too vague. That maybe I'm going to be using title in a couple of other places. Well, fortunately, I can say I only want a class to work on a particular tag type. And the way that we do that is just by putting in that little tag name right at the very beginning. So now you're going to notice that I've got div.title. So that's only going to apply to div tags. So inside my HTML example, you'll notice that I've got a span tag here and I've got a div tag here. So the result, when this is all printed out, is you'll notice that that will apply to my div but it's not going to apply to my span. So my span is going to be whatever the default color is, but my div tag will actually have our hello div. And that is one of the little annoying parts sometimes about CSS is if something isn't working the way that you expect it to work, generally speaking, it just doesn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> or sometimes you know, it'll, it'll move something somewhere else. Um, but uh, it, it doesn't give you an error message. Um, and this sort of goes back to you know, old, old, old days that one of the things the browser is going to try and do is look at what you've given it and try to make a best effort and not give you an error message if it isn't able to figure out exactly what you want. So it's just going to try and, and give you the best that, that it possibly can. Um, we will notice a little bit later when you get into like the, uh, the F12 tool that the F12 tools are really helpful in trying to track down exactly what's applying where and maybe try to uh, uh, troubleshoot exactly why a particular style isn't applying or not applying. Okay. Now, the problem with class is the fact that, again, it can be still a little bit too vague. So maybe on, on a page, there's one little spot that I need to go in and highlight, but only just that one spot. That's it. This is where ID comes into play. ID is only going to work on one specific element. And it's going to be that element with the ID attribute set on it. And that has to be unique. Has to be unique. 
one little side note here, and I, I think this is worth mentioning for anybody who's maybe going to be doing manual forms and things like that, is uh, I get a lot of questions about what's the difference between name and ID. And it's, it's, it's a good question. ID is what we can use with JavaScript and with CSS. Name is what's going to be sent back up to the server. Now, if it turns out that you didn't put in a name, then in that case, the ID would be sent up to the server. But if you do have a name, that's what's going to be sent up to the server. So let's say, for example, that again, you know, we've got a uh, we've got a form. So I've got my my little text box, and on the server, I've got some variable name that I'm going to be expecting. So maybe I'm just expecting that to be, uh, let's say, username. Um, use user. Yeah, name. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, let's try that again. There we go. Um, U S E R N A M E. I can spell username. See? Yeah. Way to go, good me. Job. All right. Yay. <laughs> okay. Now, here's the thing is that's on the server side. And I may not have the ability to go in and change that on the server. So that always has to be username. But I may need to or have uh, a desire to change that on the client side. So that way, when I go into my JavaScript and I want to be able to manipulate that and kind of play around with that, I may want to be able to change that and not impact anything on the server. And this is quite common in bigger shops where you've got a web designer and you've got the programmer that's handling the, the behind the scenes part. So my web designer can sort of do whatever it is that they want, but they're not going to impact the programmer. So they can change the ID and that's what's going to impact the client. And as long as they keep the name the same, that's still all going to be good. So I always just kind of like to highlight that. Sort of a little bit of a tangent there, but uh, I always like to highlight that because that ID name question always comes up. Yeah. So, OK. In any event, um, the last little thing to mention here is just the syntax. You'll notice pound for an ID. So dot for a class, pound for an ID, or hash, I guess, for, <laughs> for an ID. Um, and I will be the first to admit I, I get those backwards quite a bit. I don't know if you do that a lot. You mean getting the pound sign and oh, the pound sign and the the dot? Exactly. Yeah, yeah that a lot of times I'll, I'll I'll say, "Oh yeah, I want a class and I'll put a hashtag in front of that." <laughs> yeah, I, that's usually the first thing I check for when something's not working. I'm just like, <laughs> I I must have selected it wrong. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Now, we've talked an awful lot. I think it's about time to start rolling into a demo. There's one last little thing that we got to talk about though. And then we can do a demo. I promise. We'll get to a demo. All right. But first, let's talk a little bit about how we're going to apply all of this style. And as it turns out, there's three different ways that you can apply a style sheet to or style to a page or to an element. The first way, and this generally speaking is the preferred way, is to link to it. So you'll notice that it's a link. Relevance equals style sheet, type equals text whack CSS, and then wherever that reference happens to be. Now, the nice part about doing that is once again that nice, clean separation of concern. So that way, my style's over here, my HTML is over here, my JavaScript is over there. So that nice, clean separation of concern. So that way, when I'm focusing on the HTML, I can focus in on the HTML. And then when I'm focusing on the style, I can focus in on the style. On top of that, this is also going to give you reuse. So that way, I can use that on multiple pages. All right. Well, what happens if maybe there is a style, but I only want it on one page? And maybe, or I should do an or there, or maybe you're just looking to go in and play around uh, a little bit. That maybe I don't want to create a, a full separate CSS file, that maybe I'm just doing a little proof of concept, I'm just doing a little bit of whiteboarding, and I just want to be able to test something and just kind of see how something is going to work real quickly. Well, you'll notice that you can actually just toss style into the head section on a page. And it's going to be that standard CSS syntax that we saw before, where I've got my selector, curly brace, curly brace, and then 
the individual values inside of there. So just put that right there into the page. And then finally, last but not least, you can also, if you want, put style directly onto an element. And that's just simply going to have those property value pairs right inside of there. Now, I know some of you are probably already wondering, well, what happens if it turns out that we have something in a style sheet that's external, something inside of a page, and then something on an individual file? You're probably wondering that, and I'm with you. We're going to get to that. See? See? There's your little teaser. <laughs> I promise we're going to get to that. But first, let's actually get in and start doing a little bit of a demo. I think it's time, don't you? Yeah. Start <laughs> to actually see the CSS in action. Yeah, exactly. All right. Let's see. And I'm going to apologize, and this is going to be my, my one um, apology. Um, you are going to notice I'm, I'm sort of down a paw here. Um, I, uh, I, I really should come up with like a, a fantastic story involving ninjas or something. Um, but uh, I actually just lost a battle with a wine glass, which is really what happened there. So if you notice my typing is a little slow, there's, there's my apology. I mean, the tragic gumbo loss, I think, is a good story. Yeah, that is a good story. I had this fantastic pot of gumbo cleaning a wine glass over here. Wine glass shattered. And of course, the, the glass also wound up in the gumbo, so the gumbo was lost. That, that was tragic. That was tragic. We'll be holding a memorial service later this week for the gumbo. So please send filet powder. OK. Um, in any event, my house was smelling fantastic as well. All right. Let's go in and let's uh, set up a, uh, a basic uh, web page here. Now, you're going to notice that in all of our demos, we're going to be doing basic HTML here. So we're not going to be doing um, MVC. We're not going to be doing Flask. We're not going to be doing PHP. We really are focused in on just the CSS. But one big thing to highlight is, of course, you can use CSS with MVC, with Flask, with PHP, with Node. Um, so it, it's going to apply everywhere. But one of the big things that we wanted to try and do is keep it as simple as possible. And so really just HTML. Yeah. So I don't think any of your demos have MVC in them, do No, they? they don't even have JavaScript in them, because I okay. just want you to know that you know, all <laughs> the styling, CSS. Exactly. <laughs> just CSS. All CSS all the time. OK. Um, so in any event, let me go in web and let's go in and CSS demos. And I'm just going to highlight mine just to separate them from yours. Christopher demos. There we go. Perfect. And let's hit OK. And by the way, um, we are going to be throwing all of these up onto uh, GitHub. And uh, we'll uh, go ahead and share out the, the little GitHub link uh, a little bit later. But all of these will be available for, uh, for you to use. Creating projects. Perfect. OK. So let me just go in and say, um, add new item and HTML. And let's go ahead and call this my uh, index page. And let's get uh, rocking and rolling here. All right, now for right now, I'm just going to put the style right inside of here. And the reason that I'm going to do that is just for simplicity's sake, because I'm going to be kind of bouncing back and forth between the style and the HTML. So just to avoid going back and forth from file to file to file, I'm just going to do it inside of here. And then in a couple of minutes, we'll go off and, and, and move that somewhere else. So let's just go in and say uh, style, which is spelled like that. Cool. So now let's go in and create a little div tag. And of course, since this is a, a development class, we're required. Hello, world. Hello, word. Ah, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and also a real thing, hello, word, yeah. if you're creating your first Word document. There you go, yeah, hello, word. Yeah, that would work. <laughs> All right. And now, Control F5. And I'm just going to use the snap feature here, maybe. Where's my browser? Come here. There we go. OK. And let me also kind of zoom in on that real quick. All right. So I'm just going to use the snap feature here. And uh, Windows 7 was, uh, was my idea. There we go. So there's our page over here on that side. And there's our HTML. So like we mentioned, the way that style works, if you want an element, all you have to do is to simply say the name of the element, curlies, and then right inside of here, key value pair. So let's just go in and change the, uh, the font. So I'm going to say font family. And um, 
I'm going to use Comic Sans MS here. I, I would never recommend that you ever actually use Comic Sans MS. But the reason that I'm using it is really just because of the fact that you'll notice it, it, it's a very visible change. So yeah. sort of like changing the color, you know, that's very visible. The moment you change something to Comic Sans MS, that's pretty obvious. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, it's also worth noting that Christopher put the style in the, the head part of uh, the HTML document. Yeah. And if you are doing in-page CSS, that is where you should put it. Absolutely. Yep, absolutely. OK. So. There it is. That's all there is. Just simply name of the element, and away you go from there. But if I wanted to go in and specify a particular, again, type, then what I could do is I could say title, and then, again, curly. And then maybe we go in and we say um, color, colon, and let's go in and change something to blue. Now, if I save this and I hit refresh, you're going to notice no changes. Because, of course, I don't actually have an element with a class on it. So let's go in and say div, and let's say class equals, I love that bit of IntelliSense. You'll <laughs> notice that it actually, right there, yeah, title, there we go. And uh, I can now go and say uh, title. I'll just kind of keep it nice and easy, and I'll hit save, and I'm going to hit refresh. Now, when I hit refresh here, you're going to notice, of course, that title appears, that we were expecting, and you'll also notice that it's blue. And that we were also kind of expecting. Because, of course, you'll notice that I had class, and I had my little class down here. But what are the other things that you might notice about that text? What font is it using? Comic Sans. It's using Comic Sans. Why is that? Well, what is cascading, or I, I, I sort of gave away the answer there. What does CSS stand for? Cascading style sheets. There you go, yeah. cascading style sheets. So your styles will cascade. So we said that we want our div tags, all div tags, globally, to use Comic Sans MS. I said that I wanted something with that class to be blue. So what's happening is that it's applying all of those styles together. All right, now give me one second here. Um, I just need to fire up my file explorer here just because I want zoom it and zoom it. Zoom it because it's a great little presentation tool. And I'm going to bring up the F12 tools here. Because I love being able to go in and actually select the items, and we can see this in action here. So let me just kind of uh, zoom that around. And I'm going to click on the little um, element selection button right there. And then let me click on title. And once I click on title, if I come over here, what you're going to notice inside of our style section is we've got our div tag here, and we've got our title class here. So it's actually showing me every single style that it read to make that happen. So why is it Comic Sans MS? Well, it's Comic Sans MS because we told div tags to be Comic Sans MS. And why is it blue? Well, because of the fact that we said that class title was going to be blue. So that's how all of that's going to come together. Now. You might be wondering at this point, all right, well, now we've seen that if you say, well, I want the font to be this and the color to be this, then it will combine everything. What happens if something said do red, for example, and something else said do blue? Ooh, conflicts. Conflicts. All right. Well, fortunately, we've got a full section on conflicts. I, I teased the slide. Let's actually do it now. Let's talk about CSS, inheritance, and conflicts. And I think the easiest way to describe this is really in two very simple steps. Last right wins, and whatever closest describes the item wins. Yeah. OK. Now, we're going to break all of that down. But if you keep those two things in your head, you'll be just fine in, I think, every case. All right. So. Cascading, like we said, it's right there in the name. Conflicts are expected. But conflicts only arise if something says do one thing and something else on that exact same property said do something else. So if it happened to be one thing said do red, another thing did do blue, that's a conflict. In our case, that wasn't a conflict because we said we wanted the font to be something and we said we wanted the color to be something. No conflict there. So those are simply combined. 
So the question then becomes, all right, well, what about inside of a conflict? Well, step one, last right wins. And everything is going to be applied in order. So the first thing that's actually going to be applied, and it's reverse on my slide because I was trying to show whatever the most powerful was. Yeah. It's reverse on my slide here. It's going to apply first, we'll do it that way, there we go, the external style sheet. Then it's going to apply the style section, and then it's going to apply the style attribute. Or if, if you like to be kind of a, a more positive person, then the style attribute takes precedence, and then it's the style section, and then it's the external style sheet. So let's do this. Let's actually get in and do a demo here and kind of see that in action. Perfect. All right, so let me maximize that and let me sneak on into here and I'm gonna say add and I want a style sheet. And actually, you know, I'm gonna be kind of a good developer here. I'm going to create a brand new folder, and I'm going to say styles, and I'm going to add it into there. Uh, style sheet. Perfect. And let's just call this uh, index, kind of match the name of the page. There we go. All right. And now what I'm going to do inside of here is I'm going to say pound title. So if you remember, we had a class already called title, and see, I told you I was going to do it at some point, dot title. There we go. <laughs> Told you I was going to do it. And let's go ahead and say color colon and let's say red. So just to kind of review here, you're going to notice blue here, red there. So let's kind of see what happens. Let me make sure that I link this. And I love this about Visual Studio. Just simply drag drop. And it's linked. Wow. Yep, just like that. So it's already got everything. It doesn't put in the type equals, and that's fine. You really don't actually need that. Yeah, it's CSS default. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. So let's go ahead and save that. Let's bring back up my browser. And what you're going to notice is that, sure enough, my title is still blue. Why is it blue? The reason that it's blue is because that was set on the external file. We said on the actual HTML file that we want that to be blue here, so blue is going to win. And you'll also notice that if I go back in and I select that in the F12 tools, I love this about the F12 tools, that we can actually see that, there we go, in action down below. So you'll notice uh, down below there's our little div, okay, that we were expecting, and right here are the two classes. And I can see where those were applying from. And you'll also notice it does give me little score things as well. And if we want to get really, really technical, there are score things that apply with CSS. But I, I always think it's just simpler. Last right wins and whatever best describes the element. Just stick to that, and, and that's going to make your life a whole lot easier. Yeah. But you'll notice right here, that's crossed out. So we can see the browser saw it. The browser saw that external file. The browser saw, hey, we want the color to be red. But it said, wait a minute, no, 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 no. Something else wins, and it's going to have that blue win. So you'll notice that the red is all crossed out. Blue wins. Yeah. And what's nice about the F12 tools is if you um, deselect you know, the, the title color attribute, you can yeah. see what would happen. Yep, exactly. So just like Helen mentioned, let's actually just do that. So let's take away that little title right there, and now you'll notice that it changes to red. So it's a nice way that you can go in and play around with things to, um, uh, to kind of um, uh, see that in action, kind of test to see how things would, uh, would work. Um, and you'll actually notice there are tools. I want to say the name of the tool is Sidewaffle. I think that's the name of the tool. Sidewa I haven't heard of Sidewaffle. Sidewaffle. Um, so it's, it's a little add-on that you can go get. John Galloway loves Sidewaffle. Um, it's a little add-on that you can go get. And it does an awful lot of um, uh, like little add-on tools with CSS and things like that. And I want to say that one of the features for Sidewaffle is that it will um, give you the ability to go in and play around with this and have it automatically update inside uh, Visual Studio. So kind of a slick little tool there. I want to say it's Sidewaffle. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check at, uh, at, at, at break. OK. All right, in the meantime, Let's go back in and, and kind of keep playing around here. So you'll notice again that, that, that external, that internal. Let me also do, um, uh, do this real quick. Um, I'm going to just say manage NuGet packages. 
And just because I, I, I'm willing to bet that somebody listening is playing around with Bootstrap. And one of the things about Bootstrap is that Bootstrap can be very overwhelming. And because there's you know a billion different classes that are inside of there, I, I don't think I'm exaggerating by that much. Uh, but there's like a billion different classes and so forth. And so a lot of people will see Bootstrap and they'll just start to go, oh my gosh, I I, I don't know what to to do with all of this. Um, and they they get very overwhelmed when they want to go in and play around with the style that Bootstrap is going to uh, to provide. Well, here's the thing: is the styling that Bootstrap is using is doing CSS. So all of the same rules apply. So let's say that right here, I dragged out the uh, bootstrap min CSS, there we go. And down below, I said div um, class equals, uh, and let's say uh, jumbotron, and let's say div and hello uh, bootstrap, there we go. And let's go in and say bootstrap. OK. And so you'll notice that we get that little gray background. We get the, uh, the font and all of that. All of that is coming in from bootstrap and the Jumbotron class. We can overwrite that. So if I want the text inside of Jumbotron to be blue, for example, fine. Then all I would have to do is to simply say style and then dot Jumbotron. And then right inside of here, I can just say color colon blue. Let's save that. Let's come back over here, hit refresh, and you'll notice that it's blue. And again, if you want that in an external file, let's just cut that real quick. And let's, I'm just going to put it into my style section. I'm kind of keeping it separate from, uh, from the other one, style sheet. And I'm going to say bootstrap demo. There we go. And let's just paste that inside of there. There we go. Save. And let's just do a drag and drop here. And you'll notice I just need to make sure that it's after. Last right wins. So I'm just putting it after the original bootstrap. There's my custom one. Let's go in, hit save. Let's come back over here, hit refresh. And you'll notice it's still blue. So when it comes to bootstrap, and, and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the fact that we've got an awesome Bootstrap MVA. But when it comes to Bootstrap, Bootstrap can be over, very overwhelming because of all the different classes. But at the end of the day, what is it? CSS. And all the same rules still apply. Yeah. Yep. Um, I think we should also mention that there's another way to overwrite CSS properties, mm -hmm. override CSS properties, and it's not recommended. OK. Do you know what I'm talking about? Go for it. It's the, uh, it's the important. Property. Okay. So, um, so for instance, if you know you have two two properties that are in conflict, mm -hmm. um, and one is maybe high, or one is not exactly the last right. If you put in uh, exclamation mark important after the property, it, it will become more important and overwrite that style. This is this is not a good practice. <laughs> you should not use this. But it is one of the one of the ways that you see a lot of people overriding styles. I, I, I would see that getting very messy very yeah. quickly. Uh, use it sparingly, preferably not at all. <laughs> but it is it is there. Okay. It's worth mentioning. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Now let's um, uh, kick on back to uh, to slides here. We've got just one last little um, conflict here that's uh, that's worth highlighting, and that's in the case of an element. So what happens if maybe we had something that was set for uh, a div tag and for a class, and you know one was supposed to be red, one was supposed to be blue? What do we do in that case? And the best way to describe this is whatever best describes the element. So if I just say globally, I want all div tags to be something, that's going to apply first. And then if I say I want classes to be, or a particular class to be something, that's going to apply second. And then the ID is going to apply third. Again, last right wins. Or if we want to be kind of the more positive way, what's going to be more important? ID is more important, and then class, and then element. Or if we break this down and actually just you know look at it, just do a demo. I like demos. Let's go in and just do a demo. So let me do this. I'm going to just sneak right down here. And I'm just going to say div. And I'm going to say class equals title. And I'm going to say id equals uh, green. And this is our conflict. Here, well, we'll make it you know, conflict with, with exclamation points. <laughs> All right. So 
Let's, um, for right now, just go in and say color colon um, red, and let me go like this. Okay, I'm gonna put you on the spot. Are you ready for this? Uh, maybe. Maybe, okay. So, our little conflict text here. Mm -hmm. So you'll notice that right now I've got a div on it, and I've got my class equals title, so you'll notice on div I've got red, you'll notice my class title I've got blue. What color do you think conflict is gonna be in? Um, it would, I mean, it would be whatever is closest. So, I don't, I would say blue. There you go. And it's gonna be blue. So sure enough, our conflict is blue. Now, let's go in and add on our ID as well. I love IntelliSense. There we go. And let's go in and say color colon green. And then we'll come back over here. And now if I hit refresh, what you're gonna notice is that it's green. So for the element, then for the class, then for the ID, ID is going to win. So whatever best describes the element. Now, the easiest way to handle conflicts, I think in general, is try to avoid them whenever possible, just because it can get very messy very quickly um, if, uh, if you're not careful. And again, if you're ever not sure, the F12 tools do such a great job of showing you exactly what's going on there. And again, you'll notice kind of the, the scores at the end there. So um, that had the highest score, which is why that won. But again, I always think it's simpler. Just element, class, ID. Just sort of keep that, and, and the rest is, is pretty straightforward from there. Yeah. OK. OK, so uh, I see a lot of people are asking about, you know, is Bootstrap the alternative to CSS? What is the difference between Bootstrap and CSS? That's a great question. All right, so in a nutshell, um, Bootstrap is a template. Bootstrap is an out-of-the-box set of JavaScript files and CSS that's going to be designed to help make it easier to lay out a site because it does a lot of things automatically for you. So for example, let's come back over here to uh, my little uh, Visual Studio, my, my very simple little index.html. And you'll notice that with my index.html, I've got nothing here. That, that uh, There's no automatic banner, there's no automatic button style, there's nothing. Now, I can add all of that if I want to, but I get nothing here. What Bootstrap does, and let me actually just create a brand new MVC project, um, just because it's got that Bootstrap automatically there, and I think it's gonna be um, kind of an easy way to, uh, to highlight Bootstrap. So I'm just gonna do that real quick. Chugger, 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 chugger. And moving your mouse makes it go faster. <laughs> there we go. Okay. And let me just make sure that that's set as my startup. Do, 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 do. Set as startup. There we go. Okay. And let me launch this. So. What you're gonna notice is MVC by default uses Bootstrap. And what Bootstrap is gonna do is it's gonna give me a lot of different components and a lot of built-in classes that I can use. So once this comes up here, you'll notice this huge block right here in the middle, that's the Jumbotron class. And so that's what's making that gray, that's what's making that a, uh, a bigger font. You'll notice that the button here has little rounded corners on it, it's got that blue background, and again, that's because of yet another class inside of Bootstrap. And you'll actually notice, if I do this, content in Bootstrap CSS, here is all of the different classes that have been defined inside of Bootstrap and all of the different defaults that it's gonna set on all of the different elements inside of there. So Bootstrap isn't a replacement for CSS. Bootstrap uses CSS. Bootstrap is an out of the box set of CSS classes and defaults and otherwise that you can use. And what's also nice about Bootstrap is the fact that it is, um, it's, it's an open standard, I think it's the best way to, to put it. It was put out there by Twitter. Um, and so there's a great community around Bootstrap. 
and you can find all sorts of different bootstrap themes out there. So you can just drag and drop that on onto your project and poof, it will automatically look like that theme. Now, at that point, the next question might become, well, wait a minute, if Bootstrap is going to do all of this for me, why am I going to stop and learn CSS? Well, because if you want to tweak something, you're still going to need to know CSS. So using Bootstrap doesn't take away the need to know CSS. It makes a lot of things easier, but you are still going to need to know CSS. So that way, if you want to go in and tweak one little thing, that you know how to do that. I think that's sort of the, the best way that I could describe yeah. Bootstrap versus CSS. Exactly. I mean, Bootstrap at the end of the day, all the styling is done by CSS, mm -hmm. or I should say most of the styling is done by CSS. Yep. But I mean, it'll do the heavy lifting for you, but any tweaks you want to make, you'll still have to do that using CSS. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Cool. Well, with that, what do you say we, uh, we take a break? Yeah. All right. We'll see <laughs> you back here soon in yeah. a couple minutes. In about 10 minutes. So we'll see you guys then.